Hello. I think we are live now. Yay. Um, I'm Carrie Centro with Alpenglow Industries, and today we are doing a sew sesh instead of a solder sesh, but we're still doing electronics because we're adding LEDs to a tote bag. And we are using um, this awesome kit that was created by Technochick. And um, you can get it on their website at technocheck.net or um, Adafruit also sells them. And it's a pretty cool, like, all-in-one kit. You get the tote bag, you get a little button sewing kit. So it has, like, thread and a needle, which you will need for this. You can get the needle out of the little thing here without stabbing myself. There we go. Needle, and then it comes with these LEDs, which I have in this very decorative dish. And uh, it comes with conductive thread and some batteries and a little piece of conductive tape. And oh, and the battery holder that's right here. So yeah, it's, um, it's a pretty simple kit. And I actually have not done any sewing with LEDs before, so this will be my first time putting something together like this, and I'm kind of excited about it because um, I don't know if you are a yarn person. Uh, there are, you know, yarn people tend to accumulate tote bags from different uh, events and yarn type of things. So yeah. Oh, should we try to do the Instagram live thing too? Let's yes. see if we can do this too. We're going to try to put this on Instagram as well. We have like a separate camera here. Um, it's not going to be quite as good, but we'll do it. Let's see. Boink. Check in connection. <laughs> you are now live. Hello. I'm going to do the intro again a little bit. So today we are sewing a kit. It is a tote bag kit that we are adding LEDs to. And uh, this is a, uh, it's a kit that is sewn, that is sewn, that is sold by and designed by Technochick. You can find them at technochick.net. That's T-E-C-H-N-O-C-H-I-C.net. Um, or they're also available on Adafruit. And uh, it's the first time that I've been, that I've sewn with LEDs. So this is kind of exciting. And the kit is like LEDs and batteries and a battery holder, some conductive thread, some not conductive thread, and some tape. Um, and so if you're joining us on Instagram, hi, thank you, awesome. We're probably, we might not be able to monitor the comments very well because we're mostly doing this on YouTube, which is a much better viewing experience because we have like a few different cameras that we can zoom in and you can see me as well as this. And um, yeah, it's just a better viewing experience. So you can go on YouTube as well, uh, Alpenglow Industries and find us live. All right, so we're gonna get started. And let's see, so we have the bag here and there's this very large pocket inside of the bag and we're first going to start by sewing the battery holder into the pocket. And so we do this first part. This is like the only part that we do with the non-conductive thread because we're kind of sewing inside the battery compartment here and we don't want to accidentally, you know, touch things together. Um, so let's see. And I'm also going to do like probably after doing this part, I'll do like a little bit of a talk about... Um, just about the circuit that we're making, which is a very, very simple circuit. Siguru says hello. Hi. Hello, Sawara Lynx. How's it going? Sawara. <laughs> Sawara, I know. It's a weird, for for whatever reason, we have anglicized, anglicized it to Sawara. <laughs> but yeah, so we're getting our non-conductive thread ready right now to sew on, trying to disentangle it, there we go, to sew on the battery holder. Now the real test is going to be <laughs> if I can thread a needle live. <laughs> and I'm totally going to cheat and not feel bad about it because the button kit has this excellent little needle threader here. And 
Um, that is going to help me a lot because my eyes are not that great. <laughs> Call you, Bob. <laughs> hey, Bob. <laughs> um, yes, they are 2032 coin cell batteries. There are two of them used for this kit. So I am guessing, so these are white LEDs. And um, yep, or, or actually, I think they might be rainbow. They're rainbow once they're lit up, but they're clear, clear housing on them here. So uh, yes, I'm guessing that they are, um, I don't think that they actually have, yeah, they're not, they don't have anything fancy going on in them. I don't think that they're like five volt LEDs, like addressable ones are. Um, but I think that they're probably like at least maybe three or 3.3 volt LEDs. So just having one coin cell battery, which is only three volts, um, might not provide enough voltage to get those LEDs going. Um, and yeah, this is definitely tricky, even with the needle threader to try to like do this without being able to not being able to see, I think I actually might be able to, the needle threader, just the head of that needle is like super small. So it's not working with the needle threader very well. Oh, I think it's like a little, a little mushed too. So we'll you see. Use I the microscope. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I could use the microscope. I might have to. Um, I might actually use, a, I do have other needles. Um, the only problem with the microscope is the lack of depth perception, which would also be very difficult to do <laughs> with the needle. But there we go. Got it. Got it. So we are just going to, you know, I don't know, put about that much, that much thread on. Um, I'm making it red. So I Well, I chose the red thread so that it's very obvious that it's like not conductive because the conductive red, the, the conductive thread is silver. And I'm like just gonna tie a big old freaking granny knot in the end of it because granny knots are awesome. And so do do do. And maybe one more just for good luck here. Well. Okay, so here we go. We are going to, we're going to sew this like kind of inside the pouch a little bit, but also kind of towards the top of the pouch. And that's just so that we can kind of get to it. It's a little bit just easier to do the actual sewing that way. Um, I flipped the pouch outside of the bag so that I don't accidentally like sew to the other side of the bag. And yeah, we'll just go. So this battery holder has two holes. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in just a little bit. Sorry, Instagram, you won't be able to see the zoom. Uh, better viewed on YouTube <laughs> if you're just joining us on Instagram. Um, hello, people. We are making, um, so I'm looking at a little bit of Instagram comments right now. Um, we're sewing LEDs onto a tote bag. So we're electrifying, electrifying a canvas tote bag. So right now I'm just sewing the battery holder in. So I'm going to come from the underside and just sew this on a little bit. I'm going to go across, across, and I'm going to do it like a few times so that hopefully it'll be good and sturdy. Um, cause the, this is like the biggest thing that we're sewing on and we don't want it to move. So I probably should have used, gotten myself more thread. Oops. Didn't think of that. But I think that this will be good enough and we'll kind of, uh, tie it off on the back. So yeah, how is everybody doing? What have people been making this past week? So now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna kind of um, wrap it around a little bit and tie it off. And it's okay if you like catch the, um, the, 
the fabric in this a little bit too. That'll just make it like a little bit sturdier. So I go underneath and then through the loop that I just made and pull that tight. And I'll do that probably like a couple of times. Yep. No comment. What do we got? Oriented the button to the top. Yes, I did. I can I can show you that after I'm done this next little step here. But yeah, that is a good thing to point out. Thank you. Um, is that is the orientation of the coin cell battery holder um, so that the switches is, is towards the top so that you can very easily turn it on and off. All right, so we're going to like loop through again here. Pull that pretty tight. Eh, maybe once more for good luck, why not? Uh, Golden Snitch asked, are we adding yeah. LEDs to knitwear next? <laughs> that is a good question. So, and hello, Sarah, thank you for joining. Yay. Um, so I've been thinking about adding LEDs to knitwear a lot. Um, it is tricky. Um, so just real quick. So this is the orientation here. This is the on off switch right here. So it's up at the, at, up at the top. Audio's working. <laughs> Yay. Audio is working. Um, so yes, that is actually quite tricky. And, um, and the reason that it's tricky, I'm going to put this kind of down here. I'm just kind of planning, planning and plotting things out here as we're going. Okay. Um, so you know it's probably even easier is if I turned this pocket inside out to begin with. <laughs> or maybe just turning it inside out now so that we can, um, cause we're gonna wanna sew the battery wires down a little bit too. So yeah, knitwear is hard because um, most, circuits, most like sewing circuits do not, they use um, conductive thread. So the conductive thread is like this and it is just, um, it, it depends upon what type it is. There are many different types, but it might be steel thread um, or it might be like a, um, like a, a metal, like tiny, tiny bits of metal wire, like copper or something that's plated. I think that this is like steel. I want to say that this is stainless steel. Um, the thing about, the thing that's nice about a tote bag is that it's relatively fixed. Like it doesn't really, it doesn't necessarily like crumple a whole lot, especially when you're using it, it stays kind of in bag form. And you'll see a lot of um, embroidery as well that uses LEDs and are in hoops, right? So, and it's very stable. It doesn't move once it's there. The problem with knitwear is like, once you put a scarf around your neck, you're scrunching it up. So if you use this thread that's not insulated and is conductive, it's gonna short out. <laughs> and um, so you're like, okay, well, why not just use insulated thread? Well, it adds a lot of stiffness. And when you're wearing something that's knit, you know, you usually want it to drape and feel nice. And so adding like a stiff wire to that just might, it might like look kind of crappy and it might also just affect the way that the garment wears. So that's why it is trickier adding LEDs to knitted things. But I am working on ideas for that. It's been in the back of my mind for a while. So, um, and there are different materials like that people are coming up with all the time. So it, uh, it might, be, might be a thing soon, we'll see. All right, so now we're gonna sew, we're gonna kind of sew these wires down a little bit and we're going to kind of prep them first. This has come pre-stripped a little bit. There are actually like two wires in here that are just kind of um, held together by the insulation. They're, they're separate but they're each fully insulated and that one will be the positive and one will be the minus coming from the battery. And uh, so we'll just pull this insulation off here and we'll separate out these wires. So there's one set there and there they are stranded wires. There's another set there. 
And we're also just going to kind of strip it back a little bit more. So I'm going to take my fingernails. There's like a little bit of a channel between these two wires where they're kind of stuck together. So I'm going to take my fingers and I'm just going to kind of pull them apart at that channel a bit. And that's going to make it easier for us to kind of separate them out and make sure that they don't accidentally touch and short together. There we go. So now you can see that the insulation is, I know it's hard to see like clear, clear insulated wires, but um, you can see that they're now kind of separated. Um, and there's like maybe, I don't know, a half inch of separation here uh, along the insulated length. And I'm going to like kind of twist the stranded part that is where the insulation has been stripped away. Just going to twist those up to keep them tidy. All right. And now I think I am going to use just a tiny bit more of the uh, non-conductive thread to kind of hold hold those wires in place. So we'll see if hopefully I can keep threading this needle with success. <laughs> I might give threading the threading the needle job to my lovely assistant here because she has younger eyes than I do. What'd you, what'd you do today? Oh, I saw a live stream where like a 44 year old tried to thread a needle by hand and it was pretty boring. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can use that needle threader again. But the, the problem is that the hole, the opening the eye of the needle is kind of like a little bit shut just from, um, you know, from the manufacturing process. It like got a little mushed somewhere along the way. So like the needle threader doesn't really want to go through. So I might see. Are there any another. markings on the wires to indicate positive? And positive and negative. <laughs> yeah, that is a good question. And no, there are not. So I think that is something that we will have to figure out. So there are instructions on um, Technochick's web website. Uh, they are in the form of a video. So it is. It is very handy for, um, by the way, I'm just like getting new needles. I just had these from somewhere <laughs> and they have eyes that are just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to use this instead. Um, but yes, so they, she has video instructions on her website. Um, so yes, they are um, quite nice to refer to, but they're a little bit just hard for us to refer to here. Oh, this is so much better. Look at this. Oh, giant giant eye of the needle there. I can then just stick it through. Oh yeah, and this is probably like a good how-to if you have not done much sewing. I can get it without it falling out. There we go. So yeah, basically the needle threader is this flexible wire that you stick through the eye of the needle, a flexible loop of wire, and then you put your thread through the very large loop of wire that is now going through your needle and then you just pull it through and voila your needle has been threaded and it's much easier than trying to struggle seeing something really tiny and trying to get something flexible through uh, something that is really tiny <laughs> all right so now we're gonna tie this off again i need a surgeon's kit with pre-threaded needles seriously yes i do <laughs> That would be awesome. <laughs> and I'm just kind of putting three, three knots in the end here. Um, might be a little bit overkill, but that's okay. Better to have one giant knot than like a small one that might pull through the bag fabric at some point in time. So there we go. Now you can see that nice big knot there. And now I'm going to put this needle aside so that I don't get it confused. All right. 
So now I'm just going to separate these wires down and kind of um, tack them down separated. Let's see. Yeah, this might not actually be easier to do. I think it'll be maybe easier to do there. So I'm just going to like tack them down like here, kind of in the middle and do that. And once more for good measure on this guy. Ooh, I don't know what I did there. I think I accidentally got a loop, whatever. I'll just stick my needle through that and tack it down. I am not a perfectionist, <laughs> as I am sure you might have noticed. That's fine. It just has to just has to stay put and work. Now we're gonna tack this guy down. I'm thinking here, I feel like I'm screwing something up. Hang on. Um no, I don't think so because we'll we'll attach the um, the conductive thread here to these ends, and then we will pull the conductive thread through to start sewing it to to here. I guess like the other way we could have done it maybe is to like yeah no it's fine we'll pull it we'll pull it to the other side and then it'll all be good. I'm trying to remember the <laughs> the instructions from the video. I did watch the video, but it was like a couple of days ago. All right. Elasticity of conductive thread is lower than the fabric in knitwear. Um, yeah, I mean, there pretty much is, <laughs> is no elasticity in conductive thread. So, so yeah, it's it's not the easiest to um it's not really the easiest to make a flexible fabric out of so now i'm just taking my normal thread to the other side and tying it off again by putting it through the loop Choo. And I'm sure that there are people right now who are um, watching this who are much better at embroidery than I am and going like, oh my God, her stitches and knots are so ugly. <laughs> and they probably are because I'm very much a beginner at this kind of a thing. I can solder really nicely though. <laughs> cool. Okay. Excellent. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to smooth those guys out a little bit. And we still have a little bit of a loop there. But that's okay. We don't care. We're going to ignore it. <laughs> so now we will take um, some conductive thread and start to work with it. So you can see the conductive thread is much thicker than um, the normal kind of nylon thread that we were using. Oh, and if you are watching us on Instagram, just to let you know, uh, it's a little bit hard for us to monitor comments and questions there because we're also streaming this on YouTube with like a little bit of a better camera setup. So if you want to hop over to YouTube, Alpen Glow Industries, um, it's easier to like ask us questions and, and interact over there. But I knew that a lot of fiber people were on Instagram that might find this interesting. So I wanted to stream it there as well. All right. So yeah, this is like, this is kind of crazy thread that really likes to twist back up on itself because it has no elasticity, right? So all of the, all of the twist has like a lot of stored energy in this thread. And now we are going to thread the needle again. And fortunately, this one is easier. So threading the needle. There we go. And pulling it through. Ooh. 
This one we might not need to knot as much. All right. So I'm going to tie one knot in the end now. Oh, and I'm gonna tie another knot in the end. But I think two should do it with this because this is pretty fat thread. It also is like very toothy. Um, this like metallic threads, it really like, it grips very well. Like, you know, sometimes with um, the slippier, slipperier nylon thread, when you cinch down the knot, it'll, there's not a lot of friction. So it'll just kind of loosen immediately with this stuff. It's like, it's very toothy. There's not a lot of, um, it's very, there's a lot of friction. So it's, it's not loosening up really. Um, so um, what we want, how they have us connect this um, is like a little bit interesting. And I don't know, I'm, I'm like wondering, I'm wondering if I can get like a little bit of a direct connection. So what they have us do is like tie like a giant granny knot in here. And this is a piece of conductive flexible tape. So we'll cut it in half first. Um, so we'll have like half for each side. And um, the, they basically have us tie a giant granny knot here and just encapsulate the granny knot and the wire in this conductive tape. I feel like it's a little bit better if the wire and the and the thread are like touching each other. I mean, it would be great if they were knotted together. So I'm like kind of curious if I can tie the thread. Around. Yeah, like tie the thread around the the wire. Um, I don't know, but we're gonna try it. Like I was kind of thinking about um, about a half hitch maybe. So like half hitch, it's funny, like you get muscle memory, right? You do things one way. So like climbing, this is how I make it with climbing rope, loop, loop, then one loop in back of the other loop. And Perhaps then- Perhaps a clove hitch? Oh, uh, yeah, clove hitch, half hitch, uh, same same thing as far as, as far as what I, um, as far as what I am used to referring them to them as, yeah. Um, so yeah, we might not use that granny knot. So now I have like the clove hitch here that will tighten up if I try to get that in the camera. There we go. So I have the, the double loops there, one in front of the other that will tighten up once I pull the two ends. So we shall see if I can kind of make that happen. Putting that around the wire, tightening it up. Oh, ah. Yeah, I thought that might happen. Okay, we'll try it again. Second verse. Could you tie it and tape it and just have it be? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm kind of thinking okay. of, of, yeah, both tying kind and taping. Wrapped around and then. Yes, and then secure. taped for security. That's what, that's exactly what my kind of plan is. We'll see if it works. I believe in you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. I know it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to get it to go. Steady. Steady. Stay on target. Of course I have like a freaking non, my stupid little loop. I probably should have fixed that at the time. I'm going to be oh, cursing no. that stupid thing. I know it's getting in the way. I'm like, no, I don't want my non-conductive piece of wire in the way here. Get out. Hang on. There. You just go there. You stay there. Okay, there. And now, <laughs> okay. And now, if I bend this wire back on itself, then it'll probably stay even better, hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> and then yeah I kind of like that and then we will um do it we will fix it all together with the 
conductive tape. Okay. I think I am going to cut this end off a little bit since it is more than I need. Um, yeah, it'll be encapsulated by tape. So hopefully, hopefully it'll be all right. The frayed ends is what I'm thinking about. Um, yeah, 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 cutting it. All right. And adding the tape. All right, so see, this is a piece of flexible copper tape. And we're going to, I'm just trying to kind of get, instead of the short width of the tape, I'm just trying to kind of do it at an angle here. So I just like kind of get more of that thread and everything encapsulated. Red thread, get out of my way. And ah, I'm gonna really squeeze it together. Nice. Awesome. So now I think what I'm going to do is take my needle and kind of like sew it into place a little bit here too. Oop. Mm -mm. Well, what was that noise? Oh, no, that was just that was just the um oh. battery holder snapping shut. <laughs> it's just a little hard to poke it through that tape, so that was my that was what I was saying. Uh oh, oh that one was like, ah, this is not not as easy as I thought it would be to poke the needle through the tape. Oof. Yeah, maybe I won't do that right now. Maybe we'll Maybe we'll fix that later. Okay. So we got this going there. And we might add like maybe more tacks later to here, to the length of the wire here, just to kind of keep this stuff from moving around too much. So now I'm going to kind of poke this through the bag. Yeah, actually just poking it through the bag will probably serve to keep it in place too. And um, kind of see where we are then. Swara says thimble time. Yes. Thimble time, I know, right? <laughs> so now I'm going to take this stuff out. And I'm going to turn this back so that it's right side out. All right. And so now our, our wire is coming out on the back where we wanted it to. Cool. So now we're going to, um, let's see, should we, yeah, we can attach, we can attach some LEDs now and well, we can at least do one, right? <laughs> we'll do one for, we'll do one first and then we'll, um, do the other side and like hopefully get to the point of actually lighting up an LED live today. Um, and cause we might not get through sewing all of them. So um, the idea, so these LEDs are like little rainbow twinkly LEDs and uh, you know, it would be nice to put them in the stars, like zoom out a little bit here. There we go. Um, so we can like put them one in each star and like one in the horn tip. And we want to kind of, make them a chain. So we want to, we want to start with one and then we'll sew to each individual one. Um, so this is probably like a good point to take a little bit of a break and talk about like the circuit here. And um, so we have basically the simplest circuit we can have going on. And we actually have two batteries in this stack up, which are in series. And let's see, that's not showing up really well. Let me grab a marker. Oh, hey, I have one right here. 
and to grab a swig of beer. Today, this live stream is brought to you by, <laughs> no, not really, but uh, it is, I am drinking Hanalei Island IPA. Uh, it's a little fruity, which is kind of nice because it's been really hot out lately. So having having an IPA that's like a little bit on the more light and re refreshing side has been nice. All right. So, ah, that's better. Okay. So we have two batteries with a plus and a minus that are hooked up in series. So we have a three volt battery and a three volt battery and they add up to be six volts. So over here, we have, you know, we have ground, which is abbreviated GND, which is also zero volts or the negative part of the battery. But it's really just kind of referred to as zero in common electrical parlance. And we are hooking up these LEDs all in parallel. And so we will hook up, we'll have like one of our LEDs with the legs and we'll hook up one leg to the plus and one leg to the minus. And then we'll have um, another LED. This is sort of the more electrical way of drawing it. Um, have another LED here with the two legs. One's hooked up to a plus, one's hooked up to a minus. Um, an LED in schematic land is generally this symbol. So because LEDs are called light emitting diodes. So you have the diode symbol here in the middle. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit maybe. Boop. So you have the diode symbol in the middle and it you have like a little arrow off to the side indicating that like light is coming out of it. So um, anyway, so we are going to like hook these up and then we'll do like another one, another one, however many we wanna do. Um, and so we're just hooking them straight up to the plus and minus of the battery. And it's worth noting that this is not a, this is not a um, normal, setup that you would find. The, um, you generally don't want to hook up LEDs straight to the battery because um, basically there's nothing that then limits the amount of current going into the LED and the LED will just kind of go pop and die. <laughs> so uh, usually you always have a resistor before an LED. Now in our case, the reason that we can get away with hooking it straight up like this is because this conductive thread is not actually super conductive. Um, it's not as conductive as like a copper wire or the traces on a circuit board. So it is acting like our resistor. So we sort of have like the resistor built into the thread. So anyway, that's why we can hook it up, hook it up straight like that. Uh, yeah. Oh, and there's actually, I, I did not I missed a section of this. There's actually like a little switch in line here. And that's built into this little battery, um, to this little battery holder is the switch. So that just basically makes or breaks. It can either be the positive or the negative power, which we will need to figure out, which is which before proceeding There's much further. Flat side. Yes. There's no flat side on them. Oh no, we're gonna oh, have wait, to. No, there is. Oh. <laughs> I lied. It's just. It's very... like, oh no, we're gonna have to look it up again. <laughs> very hard to tell. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna do a little bit of um, figuring out on this battery holder, which is positive and which is negative, because we need to figure out which side of the LEDs we're going to hook up next. So. Um, this is an interesting battery holder. Um, like, so, uh, you'll kind of know, let's see. <laughs> yes. Conductive thread has built in resistance that is greater than zero ohms. Exactly. Exactly. And we could probably actually like measure the res resistance along a thread, um, a little bit. 
Uh, so in this battery holder, you're in order to hook them up in series, which is the way that this battery holder is set up, you, um, you do not put them both facing the same direction. You put, uh, you put them facing opposite directions. And uh, the other thing is we should make sure that we, it is, it's going to be impossible to see in this video, but they're in like imprinted in the battery holder there is a plus and a minus indicating which side of the battery should be down. So this one, the plus should be down and this one, the minus should be down. And so we do that. And I'm going to grab a voltmeter. I should probably have one by the desk, but that's And we will figure this out. And again, um, I think in the instructions, it, it tells you which is which. Um, but it's in video format, so I don't have don't have perfect access to that right now. So we will just make a guess and see. All right, and we guessed <laughs> we guessed um, opposite. Let's see if I can get this in the room. So um, we do have six volts coming out of that battery, which is good. But um, we know that right now the wire, the wire that we've sewn um, the thread to right now is, in fact, the positive wire. So there we go. So I believe that goes, oh, I don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> I believe that goes to the longer LED. The LED. flat side is not the short pin. Oh, no. Okay. So it goes to the, so the flat side is the, wait, the flat side is the short pin. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that goes to the longer um, leg on the LED here. So we will be sewing long leg of LED to um, the one that we have, have sewn up. All right. So now let's kind of poke an LED through the tote bag here. And hello, if you're joining us on Instagram, hi. Um, sorry, we're not really monitoring, able to monitor comments there because we're also doing this on YouTube, um, which is a lot easier. So um, if you want to follow us on YouTube, go to YouTube. Type in Alpen Glow Industries, and you'll get you'll see the link to this live stream, and you might be able to um, to chat with us a little bit better there. All right, so um, this these holes I actually um, I actually kind of used the needle to um, to poke through the canvas and like kind of wiggled it around there to make um, to separate the fabric enough so that the LED leads would go through. And um, right now, let's see. Yeah, I think we will make it so that the, the long leads that we'll be sewing are going to be kind of to, uh, basically, if you were making kind of a rainbow, they're going to be on the top of the rainbow. So they're going to be the lead is going to be on the left here. And then as I, as we put them up here, um, we'll keep it on, we'll kind of like keep it on the top because we're going to be making an arc and we don't want the two to have to cross in the middle. <laughs> nice DMM. Yes. Yes. I, I do believe in good multimeters. I mean, you can get multimeters for super cheap and that's awesome because it makes electronics accessible, like way more accessible. But um, if you're going to be doing a lot of stuff, investing in a nice multimeter is so worth it. So worth it. So I'm just poking the LED through the bag right now. And then I'm going to turn the bag inside out. 
Hopefully the LED won't move. untangling things you know all right still got the led poking through i'm gonna kind of okay, zoom right. out a little bit here because it's gonna be a lot of uh doing stuff all right so right now i have cool so i have the led now poking through right here and I have the bag, the inside of the bag flap. Um, so the cool thing about this kit is that it's a nice big pocket and that will cover the, uh, the sewing that we're doing for the circuit. So it'll be, um, so when you're using the bag and putting things in and out, you won't be like getting stuff caught in those threads. Yeah, so that's good. Um, we could do this couple of different ways. I'm just kind of debating right now. Um, yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to do this definitely with like multiple threads. Um, yeah, I probably should have, I probably actually should have looped up the wire here so that it was more poking out towards the top here because now I kind of have to like use the wire to sew down and then, then across. Um, because for this, yeah, and I don't want it to short either. So I think I'm gonna go to the side and then down. Um, cool. And let's see, yeah. Because while we're sewing it, we want to, um, we basically want to be able to like move the flap around um, in order to poke the LEDs through and stuff like that. And, um, and we don't, we don't want the flap to be like stuck down to the bag as of, as of yet. Um, but also when we cover it like this, we're going to be kind of sewing this LED circuit on the on the back here and across here. And so when we do this, um, we don't want this wire, this thread that we're sewing in to short to that stuff. So I might, I might kind of, cheat a little bit and pull this up a little bit because I'm not really liking how that's running right now. I think, I think we're going to be in danger of shorting out um, when it's done and we don't want that to happen. Um, like I don't like for this kind of, um, for this kind of project, like shorting something out, I don't think is very dangerous because these batteries have like built in um, current limiting and stuff like that. So it's not that big of a deal, but you know, it just means that your circuit won't work, but it, it would be unlikely for anything to like catch on fire. Are you just un undoing that? I'm just kind of pulling this one around to see if I can get it into a better spot. Mm. I'm trying to do it without um, without undoing the red wires, but honest, the red threads that right. we're tacking it down. But honestly, I think I might just cut those and just like tack them in late at some later point um, because I really do kind of want them to come out up here so that when it's when this is flipped, there's really no danger of it interfering with the circuit that's gonna be down here, yeah. you know? So, yeah. Squaro had a solder it yourself kit for a multimeter. Oh, nice. Oh, that's kind of cool. Solder your own multimeter. So yes, I'm going to take this out and, oh, come on. See, and I will get an opportunity to fix that stupid red loop that kept getting in the way of everything. Yay. 
Um, so, haha, so, um, I th think I might, ooh, I might actually, I might actually put it over here. Um, even though, you know, even though that's, the wires are like going to be a little bit in the way of the, uh, of the, um, switch. I would really much rather them have them coming out over on the side. Um, and the reason that I, you could also just solder this whole or solder. <laughs> so ugh, sewing, soldering, you could also sew this further over here. It was just like a little bit, it was just a little bit trickier to do with like the flap in the way. So I am going to stick this over here. And then I think everything will be much happier. And for right now, we're just like, we're just pulling it in, pulling it in over there. And later we can make this look nice and pretty and tack it down so that it doesn't really get in the way. All right. So now um, we're using this, this cool trick um, from the video uh, of doing this, like trying to do this as invisibly as possible from the front side. So you basically, we'll zoom in on this, this part a little bit. Let's see if we can, ooh, yeah, I think we can get it focusing. There we go. So you basically just take like one, like tiny um, woven strand here and, and grab that with your needle and pull it through. And that makes it so that your circuit will be like pretty much invisible from the other side, which I think is kind of cool. So I'm just doing that here. And like, I don't know, like maybe once every, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or something. And make sure you get a couple strands of, um, of thread so that, you know, it won't break. But oh, like that, I needed to get a little bit more. See, we're learning. We're learning. Uh, let's see. Pull through. Yeah. I don't know. It's just easier for me if I can like grab it from the back a little bit. All right. So I don't know. Mine might not be perfectly invisible from the front, but that's okay. And we're just going to keep making these little stitches in line. And now I think it's okay to kind of start angling towards our LED here, which are, which is right there. So we'll do this. Have you used conductive thread before? I have not. I've been meaning to do something like this forever. <laughs> and this is my first time using it. So yeah, learning experience for me as well. And I'm just like, every now and then I just want to kind of check to make sure I'm not like accidentally sewing, sewing the back to the front, <laughs> sewing, sewing through both sides. Yeah, but I'm good so far. All right. And going to go here. One more. Oh, am I in the camera? There we go. In the camera. Like that. Okay. So now I have like my stitches coming down there. So we're basically going to do the same sort of thing um, for this, I think, that, uh, that I did for the, uh, for, to attach it to the um, wire. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try the half hitch magic. 
or clove hitch magic. Let's see. There we go. That's our wire right there. We'll see. We'll see how well or badly this works. <laughs> I can only do it one way. It's so funny. Like my brain just does not want to do it any other way than as if I'm like tying myself to an anchor. <laughs> Okay, so we'll see about pulling this. Come on, one loop is pulled. There we go. Second loop is pulled. Aha! Yay! Yay! Maybe. So here, we do want this cinched up pretty tight. We don't want any loops flopping around that could potentially touch the other leg and short out our circuit. So we always have to be thinking, you know, remembering that this thread, uh, it's getting stuck on the um, LED bump right now. So the next time I should probably try to keep the, um, the uh, thread above the, the little bump on the leg. There we go. Let's see if that works. Arrgh, come on. definitely like it's so interesting this um this thread as i said before it is like pretty toothy and it really likes to grab itself and so um it doesn't like to it really does not like to um smoothly smoothly um uh uh like constrict I'm gonna try one more time. And if that doesn't work, then I will try just kind of the sewing method of it. Let's see about that. Let's see about keeping it off of the LED a little bit. Maybe, maybe, maybe this will work. Yeah, wow, well, that's, no, that's tough. So, all right, I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bend the LED legs. Um, so that's kind of, like acting like sort of a little staple almost. I'm gonna bend this one kind of up. So there you can kind of see that. And I'm going to essentially kind of sew this down. Um, so I'm gonna just um, kind of pick up this strand here and make a loop. Do, do and then go through the loop and now that cinched down way way better and I'm gonna do that again hmm. that's an interesting suggestion what's that try looping the ends of the LEDs then sew around the loops Oh, like kind of bending the ends of the, the leads into a U-shape. So I'm actually going to do that next <laughs> to kind to make sure it just like doesn't slide off and to, to anchor it in place like that. Um, but what I'm also going to do, I think, I think it would be good for you to have like a little bit of a set of um, set of nippers like this and um, maybe some needle nose pliers. Um, again, I just don't want, I don't want the end of this, of this LED that I've, this LED leg that I've bent back on itself. I don't want it to be able to accidentally touch this one. So I'm gonna cut it off just like a little bit short. Like that. And then I'm going to use my pliers here to just like squish it together. Chunk. Cool. Um, and then I could actually like go on to solder the next one. Um, so actually what I'm going to do, since I have more than one needle, I'm just going to kind of keep that over here for right now. And I am going to attach the other battery, the other um, battery wire. So this will be the ground. 
and we're going to sew that into place and sew that down here. And then we're going to test lighting up this one LED. Um, and also, yeah, so another thing is um, if you have the batteries in here, um, like we do, we should probably, um, you should just be doing all this stuff with the, with it switched off. Or if you want to make sure you can just like take the batteries out. So that's just so that you can like touch the wires together while you're, you know, doing everything and not have to be worried about shorting stuff out. All right. So I'm going to take more thread now and going to um, thread another needle and do the other side. I need to mix this sewing, rock climbing, jewelry making, and electronic skills, right? <laughs> All things I have actually done. <laughs> so like, yeah, um, a job that I had in high school and in college for a while was um, working for a jewelry store. And that is actually, um, and it was a very nice jewelry store that made a lot of its own jewelry. And um, that's actually the very first time I learned how to solder was with a propane torch and with jewelry. And that did actually have an impact on electronics because it's a very long and convoluted story, but, um, Basically, at my first job, there was when I first got hired, there was like some crazy stuff that happened between me accepting the job offer and my start date and like this program that I got hired to work on. Funding was canceled. And so uh, like it was kind of funny for funny and weird for the first few months of me working. They didn't really have much of a job for me. So I was kind of going around and doing some miscellaneous different things and like cutting some steel in the machine shop and doing some support work and stuff. And then they had a, uh, a program and I was more right out of college. I had way more of a mechanical engineering skill set, and I hated electronics. And so, uh, but, Oh shit, I just broke my thread. I just broke my thread. So apparently this is friable. This stuff is kind of friable as well which isn't too surprising. I mean, it's like metal, right? Um, we're going to have enough. Let's see. Are we going to have enough to do this if I do that? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think we can work with half the, half the amount. So anyway, they, um, they knew that I had like done like some fine, uh, fine work with jewelry and learned how to, you know, solder with a propane torch. And they were like, Eh, well, we need like an entry level electrical and like elect electrical engineer on this job. And, you know, I'm sure we can like teach her how to solder electronics if she knows how to solder jewelry already. And so that's kind of how I got started in electronics. And, you know, uh, once I actually was working and had a super cool like application and problems to solve and stuff like that, uh, electronics got a lot more interesting and relevant. And, oh, <laughs> Yeah, you got to pull it through the needle. So, and yeah, and so I actually uh, liked electronics instead of hating it like I did in college, um, because basically just the entry entry level electronics class was, was kind of crappy. There was not, the teacher was a very nice person, but he just was not a very good teacher. And so, you know, I just kind of got turned off on it at that point. Um, and I got a 19 on my first exam. That was cool. I mean, I think that a hundred, I, well, a hundred mostly. Yeah. I think the average though was like a 30 something. That, that was pretty normal. <laughs> uh. All right. So now we're back up here. And again, we are going to, so I don't know. I, I had like pretty good success with the half hitch around here on the other one. Oh, thank y'all. So I think I'm going to try that on this one as well, see if we can replicate the same kind of a thing and, um, and then tape it. Yes. All right. All right. This is a little trickier since it's sort of tacked down now, but 
I think we can do it. I'm going to actually cinch it up along this nice, smooth part, smooth plastic part. See if I can. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm going to slide it down, um, down the insulation to the wire part and cinch it up even more. Do, do, do. Come on. There you go. All right. And now we're on the wire part. And hopefully we won't pull it completely off the wire. Nope. Cinching down pretty good. I'm happy with that. All right. And now I am bending the wire back to fully encapsulate and grab that, grab that thread. All right. And now I'm going to find on the table the other, ah, I think that's right here. Yes, the other little piece of conductive tape. Conductive tape. Right there. And we will tape over that little thing to fix it all into place. All right. So I'm going to put the tape there. Make sure my wire is all encapsulated with the tape. Tape it back over itself like that. And give it like a good little. Okay, cool. And now we are going to pull it in the opposite direction of the other one. And we will make it come out over here. Yeah, this is going to be like just enough to get to that LED. That's okay. We'll use the LED as a uh, convenient uh, place to join a longer thread. Hopefully it'll make it there. We'll see. Uh, so on this side, oh, we have a little more length. I want that more length. I want it. It's just kind of stuck right now. Hang on here. What's going on? What is going on? Oh, I see. I think it's just the tail. There we go. So yeah, I probably could have, um, I probably could have uh, cinched that up a little bit more, but I think it's pretty good. All right, so that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. These are like a little bit close right now. Um, I I will definitely go in later and just like tack those with some non-conductive thread just to make sure they like stay put and stay separated. So now I'm doing the little grabs and bring in, bring in the thread down and hopefully I have enough thread to get there. <laughs> if not, that's okay. I mean, it's not like we don't know how to like tie some thread together, right? I kind of like it because the sewing part is actually like the, the fast part. It actually doesn't take that long to, um, to actually like make the little circuit, which is cool. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Robin? Can we check Instagram comments? Everybody's probably gone from Instagram. They're like, we can't see anything. And <laughs> no, whatever. I got it pulled up on my phone. You got it pulled? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Cool, cool. That's where the uh, adding LEDs to knitwear uh, came from. Yes. And... Yeah, I do want to. I do want to do something with that. It is definitely an interest to me, but they're definitely challenges to keeping it flexible and insulated that, um, that, you know, you just don't, don't have to deal with when you're doing something that stays put like a bag or embroidery hoop based things. Um, 
Becky Stern did some really nice constellations, embroidered um, constellations with LEDs pretty recently. Yeah, those are super cool. Yeah. I like how she used like dark, a dark fabric background for them. Yeah. So it looked like a night sky. And I also have, um, I think she was the one that designed it uh, in the first place. It's it's the Ohm Sweet Ohm um, kit, which is, it's a uh, cross stitch kit with the resistor color code. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah. So I've had, had that sitting there for a while. So now I've gotten all the way down there and I'm going to like loop this guy around the wire and I'm like running out of thread. So it's going to be hard to do. But that's okay. We're up for the challenge. I need like a bent needle. Maybe I should just bend this needle. Is that a good idea? Probably not. Um, but we've got spares. Uh, we've got spares. <laughs> I know. All right. Oh, we totally got this. Maybe. <laughs> as long as we don't. Might be able to. I mm, can't really change the position of that leg too much. There we go. If I only get like a little bit of the loop in, that will be okay because as I said, this is so toothy. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to cut it right now. Kachoo. And see i need a crochet hook why don't i have a crochet hook here i have a bazillion at home there we go pulling the tail through haha -ha. all right okay and kind of putting the led back on itself getting this guy out of the way and yeah, this guy really is not in any danger of touching the other side, so I am pretty happy with that. And I'm just going to like mush it together a little bit. All right. And keep those two out of the way of each other. All right. Yeah, that's maybe... Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, those two are separate this guy off so it doesn't short. Okay. Okay. All right. Is it the moment of truth? It might be the moment of truth. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> oh, will it or will it not work? Oh God. Now I have to see which way the batteries went in again. Okay. Minus is down there and plus is down on the top. We are good. Minus is down there. Plus is down on the top. Stick you together. <laughs> Swaro says drum roll. Drum roll, I know. And maybe. All right. Turn switch to on. Will you work? Hey! Look at that! We have an Yay! LED! Ah! <laughs> it won't take away my degree in engineering, hopefully. <laughs> so that's a very similar pattern to the Happy Rain Cloud, where it's slow and then fast. Yeah! Yeah, actually, so the Happy Rain Cloud one, ones that we're using, I thought that they were only fast changing. Um, there, we have two different types. One is fast changing and one is slow changing. And I know we use the fast changing, but does it actually change? Do the fast does the fast changing one actually change speed? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it starts. It starts, starts slow, slow and then and goes, then it, and then it goes fast and random, and okay. then it goes back to being slow. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, I, th I think it's the same type. So these LEDs are kind of cool because they basically have, um, you know, this like blinking and color changing functionality built into them. So you can't control that. They just they just do that when you add power to them. But um, but it's fun because you know you don't have to have like a microcontroller hooked up to these in order to just have like a fun color changing effect. You know. Um, so yeah, 
another thing about these LEDs that are kind of cool. So you could use, you know, if, if you have some LEDs lying around, if you're an electronics person and you have LEDs lying around, um, you can use any similar one of these like two pin, you know, color changing LEDs. Uh, this is like roughly five millimeter, I think. You could use five millimeter or three millimeter if you have those. Um, these have a flat top. I'm not sure if you can see it there. So instead of being like the normal domed top that, that LEDs have, these are a flat top. I just thought that that was kind of cool because it um, it just doesn't, it doesn't poke out like quite as much as a normal five millimeter LED. So, um, so yeah, like if you have some of these LEDs lying around, basically all you need is a double CR2032 coin cell battery holder like this, um, some way of sewing it on, or, you know, you can even like tape it or glue it on. That's fine. I'm not going to tell. Uh, and then you need conductive, you know, two batteries and some conductive thread and some non-conductive thread too. Uh, and of course a needle as well. So, um, I think pretty much going, I'm going to talk about what I would do to add more LEDs to this chain. Uh, and then probably kind of wrap up the live stream since it's stuff that you've already seen. Um, but yeah, and I just want to also make sure that things don't kind of shift and short because we have a bunch of stuff that's kind of, you know, very delicately, <laughs> delicately on here. Ooh, I kind of like the, the effect through the bag too. That's kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, so we have um, battery leads tied and taped up here, tied and taped up here to the thread. And then we keep our two strands of conductive thread separate. Um, LEDs are directional. So you have to make sure that you have the correct, uh, correct leg hooked up to positive and the correct leg hooked up to negative. Um, the LEDs won't like blow up if it's backwards, they just won't work. So uh, yes, so positive, positive goes to the long LED there. Yeah, you can see here that the leads are two different lengths here. The little legs are two different lengths, positive to long, negative goes to the short one. And so to add more um, to this chain, we would basically just keep on going. So I would put another LED I'll just, I'll poke another LED through while we're at it. I don't think, I don't think I'll screw up anything by doing that right now. <laughs> There's a Famous request for photos if, if and when you finish. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We'll post, post this up. Well, you know, this might, this might be my new fiber project. I have like 10 knitting projects that I'm in the middle of that I haven't been making progress on. So this will be, this will be the new one and it will take priority. <laughs> So right now I'm just like poking the ne a needle through two points in the middle of this star just to make kind of bigger holes uh, so that the LED leads can go through. And I'm going to try, let's see. Yeah, this is a little, a little tricky. So that's my positive, that's my negative. And also, you know, you might want to, um, it, you know, it wouldn't hurt to like stick a piece of tape here to just temporarily, temporarily label like which is your positive and which is your negative, just so you don't have to like keep going back and forth and trying to remember that. Um, but what what you kind of want to do is you kind of want to you know make like a rainbow semicircle here because you want you don't want you want to keep your positive and negatives um, parallel to each other and not touching. So you want to kind of arrange your LEDs in that way as well. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a little tricky. I actually probably should have done this maybe a little differently. I'm going to have to bring, what I'll do is I'll, here, let me put this LED through and show you first. Uh, we'll put negative on that side. So poke this guy through here. Where was that hole that I just made? Maybe I didn't make it big enough. Uh, that's okay. There we go. And so I'm poking that through. Oh, I've got one. Did I get both? There we go. Ah. Okay. All right. 
So um, this guy is going to go to my other short lead, which is, let's see if I have something to point with there. So this guy is going to go to my other short lead, which is right here. And then this guy is going to go to my long lead, which is over here. So I'm actually going to take um, probably a new piece of thread, attach it to that lead, and sew around to here. And this one, I will also attach a new thread to this lead and sew it up to that one. And then, then they'll be nice and parallel and I can continue that, uh, that shape going across, across the arch here to these two. Um, they give you a bunch of LEDs with this kit. They give you 10 LEDs. Uh, if you do all of the stars and the unicorn horn, you only use five of them. So I was kind of thinking of adding more. One thing you want to note, though, is when everything is said and done, it's probably like, so you want to make sure that your circuit is covered by this flap. Um, because that way, you know, you when you take stuff in and out of the bag, you won't accidentally hook this and like pull out your circuit, right? And also, if you have something metal in your bag, you won't accidentally short out your circuit. So uh, I'm not going to put LEDs down too far. Um, like the me and sparkle are, are not covered by this flap. I think you can, yeah, there you go. You can see it there. So I, I won't put LEDs in the bottom of the, of the main here, and I won't put LEDs by the me and sparkle. I'll keep all the LEDs up here underneath the flap. And then at the very end, what I would do is I would actually probably sew the edges and the bottom of the flap down to the side of the bag. Um, you know, that might show through to the other side, to the, to the fabric a little bit, but uh, I don't know, maybe do it with some white. <laughs> there you go. Do it with some white thread. And um, so it's not that noticeable. And that way, you know, your circuit will be nicely protected and it should last a pretty long time. So yeah, um, in terms of, yep, red thread on positive, black thread on negative. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you could definitely do that in order to label them. You could, um, like you, they, it comes with this little sewing kit. So you could, uh, normal, well, <laughs> I, I hate to say convention because every time you, you say there's a convention to something, there are 10 examples of something that go against that convention. <laughs> However, <laughs> normal convention for low voltage electronics, again, low voltage, it is different for housing wire. Um, low voltage electronics, positive power tends to be labeled as red and negative or ground uh, is labeled as black. And so you could actually wrap the non-conductive thread. You could tie like a little bit of red thread to your positive, um, your positive conductive line here. And you could like tie a little bit of black thread to your negative conductive line here. That's a good suggestion, Suara Links. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's what I would do. I would sew this down so it's all nice. The battery, I don't know how long it'll last. That's that's a pretty good question because these are kind of on all the time, but they are blinking. It'll depend upon how many LEDs you use um, and you know how long you have it on. Uh, the nice thing is that there is an on-off switch right here. So you know you can just turn it on when when it's not being shown off. But I mean they'll, I mean, I would guess that they'll last for like a day of solid kind of. You know, like I would say like maybe 10 hours of solid stuff if you only have five of the LEDs sewn and they're just always blinking. Um, maybe longer, but my guess would be would be around five hours. Um, yeah. I don't know. Are there any any other questions anywhere? We are now we are looking at Instagram, too. So ask ask away if you have joined and you're just like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Uh, oh weird i feel like oh instagram is mm -hmm. delayed oh my god that's bizarre yeah. <laughs> i'm glad i'm not looking at it i'm so confused one second because i was like is this it's like what's so going on <laughs> so yeah it's delayed by a couple of seconds mm -hmm. so i'll wait then for my audio to catch up with me <laughs> asking if there were any questions 
but yeah, I don't know. This is cool. Like, I definitely want to do more of this stuff. And, um, you know, for my knitters out there and fiber aficionados and crocheters and weavers and spinners and everybody, um, I know you have a lot of canvas bags from different things. I have a lot of canvas bags from like different shows and different yarn companies and events and stuff. So, um, so you can... You can imagine that if you had like a little kit of parts that was ready to go, you could totally use your own tote bag and electrify your own tote bag. And that might be kind of cool. Uh, and so like maybe maybe I should start carrying some some parts for doing that in in the Alpenglow shop, because I think that that might be kind of fun. Uh, yeah, I will. I will look into that and I will try to make that a thing within the next couple of weeks. I'm not quite ready to sell tote bags yet. I don't, I don't need more tote bags. I have a lot of tote bags. <laughs> and besides, you can get this very nice kit from Technochick. Uh, I would definitely, definitely encourage you to do that um, because, you know, they've put a, quite a bit of time into making this and making this happen. And they do have a nice tutorial on YouTube, which is only 10 minutes. So you don't have to look through this whole, whole thing. But, um, but yes. So definitely support people who've been doing work and putting stuff out there. It's the right thing to do. All right. Well, I'm going to do one more cool shot here of it all, all lit up. Actually, I'm going to turn it off again and put this. Flip it yeah, flip it around. And then, then we'll sign off. Trying to not lose that LED that I already had, uh, the second one that I haven't wired up yet. Do, do, do. All right. Oh yeah, interesting. So like you can you can see like a little bit of the stitches that I made on here. We'll, we'll I'll show that to you in a second. I just want to make sure since everything is still sort of temporary here before turning it back on, I just want to make sure that we're all good and not shorted out, which we totally are right now. So you can go over there and not be touching. Excellent. Do they make conductive thread in different colors? No, all the conductive thread that I've seen is is just, you know, the color of the conductor. So most of it has been stainless steel. Mm. Uh, for you yarn folks out there, Habu makes conductive thread, or at least they used to. They used to have cones of it. Um, and they, they did have some, now that I'm thinking about it, they did have some that I thought was like, a mix of stainless steel and colors. I have not tried that at all. It, I don't know if that would be conductive enough to make this work. I'm just gonna take out our LED right here that was, was kind of in there. I'm gonna zoom out here so you can see the whole thing. Um, yeah, you know, I would check Habu for that. I'm not sure if it's conductive enough to make a circuit out of. Um, but yeah, really the only conductive thread I've seen is, is, uh, you know, kind of gray in color. It's generally stainless steel. Um, I think that there are other formulations, but they tend to get more expensive, um, that are like, uh, like tin coated, uh, conductors, maybe, maybe copper, or like maybe nickel or something. Um, but I think for fiber people, for spinners out there, what might be super freaking cool is to core spin on top of stainless steel thread. So I kept mentioning that this stuff was really, really toothy. And that would be awesome for core spinning because your fiber would just grab right onto it. And then you could essentially, for people who aren't fiber people out there, Core spinning is when you take already spun yarn as your core and you essentially take unspun fiber and you spin it in a way where the fiber just like wraps around the core and it makes 
this amazingly fluffy, like warm, fuzzy, fat yarn that is kind of amazing. So, um, so like a way to kind of get the best of both worlds, although like it would be really fat, <laughs> would be to core spin something. But in, in that way, you could make this wonderful multicolor thread that would have a conductive interior that would be conductive enough for circuits. And, you know, you could do something like, you know, kind of sew that to the outside of something um, and make that, make that yarn be like part of the overall aesthetic of your project. So let's see, we're gonna turn this on. Boop. Yay, we are sparkling. Uh, I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit just so you can see, so you can see my stitches, you, can, you know, you can see them over here, but I am totally fine with that. I mean, if I were more of a perfectionist, I would probably use this as an opportunity to um, hone in on my technique of just getting like one thread and not breaking it <laughs> and see how that went. Um, so, you know, practice practice makes better, right? But it's pretty good as it is. And I don't know, it kind of looks like a little shooting star. So I'm cool with that. Sparkly. Yes, it is sparkly. And also, um, it's worth noting that this ink that the bag is printed with is like a little bit sparkly. It's like a little bit glittery, which is kind of fun too. Yes. All right. We're going to sign off. It has been lovely hanging with you. I hope that you've had fun and learned something. And we'll do something again next week. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but it will be something. It might probably be back to soldering a little bit next week. Oh, hey, we should play you out. That's right. So this was <laughs> this was what we put together last week. We soldered together this kit. And, you know, maybe maybe we need some. I don't know if you can hear that. I hope you can hear it. It's very quiet. <laughs> all right <laughs> that's that's it oh this kit if you didn't if you didn't tune in uh last week this kit is super cool you can get it at cyber city circuits um yes i think we have a url popped up for that shop.cybercitycircus.com. It is the Dream Weaver 4N Junior, and it's like a little great looping kit that makes bleeps and bloops, and you can adjust the pitch and the tone. Yeah! <laughs> anyway, it's fantastic, and it's like, I mean, how can you not love that? All right, we will see you next week. <laughs> Bye!